we're doing today, uh, we're working on a 1965 GTO convertible. Now, this was actually a Le Mans. The owner's converting it to a GTO. And what we've done to accomplish that is on these old classic cars, the emblems were very extensive. And when I say extensive, I'm talking they were bit big, uh, loud, you might say. And it caused a lot of situations on putting them on because it had holes. Because the emblems actually had little pins on the back of them. And then you would either use a barrel clip or you would use a speed nut to install them with. So if we look on the inside of the quarter panel, you can see right there, that is the holes that I welded up that uh, the emblem, it said Le Mans on it or Pontiac or whatever, individual little letters that went on there. Now we also went ahead and we replaced the lower quarter section on this down here. That was all rotted and rusted and I had ended up replacing that. And then once I replaced it, of course, I put a skim coat of uh, polyester filler on it to make sure everything was level where it was welded up. Kind of like this quarter panel over here. And you can basically see where I had to replace that section. I replaced that whole section of that quarter panel. I don't believe in replacing um, complete quarter panels if you don't have to on classic cars due to the fact that aftermarket does not properly fit proper and it is not made exactly like the original so I always believe that only replace what you need necessary to replace and since this quarter panel was so bashed up and and wrecked we went ahead and replaced only the section that needed replaced this car was wrecked in this corner right here it got t-boned or got hit right in this area and it uh, dented it up. Somebody already fixed it once. They did the old school style where you drill all the holes in it and you pull it out and then fill it with Bondo. And I didn't want the owner to have a car like that, so I went ahead and replaced that section right there. And then um, all the way around where it was welded, we went ahead and put a skim coat. Actually, we filled it in first and then skimmed it with uh, polyester filler to feather everything out but the real situation is and I didn't even know this but look right here I haven't even sanded that little spot down the real situation is is what we're here for today is we're here to actually learn how to actually block sand your Bondo or your polyester filler to a primer ready surface and that's what we're going to show you how to do today So the most common way that most people would do body work is they would get their air compressor out, they would get air tools out, and they'd start using them, such as the DA sander, this is a DA sander, and then we also have an air file. Now the air file is a very, very good tool, but you have to learn how to master that tool because if you over sand, you're either going to have high and low spots or you're going to end up continuously putting filler in, Bondo and Evercoat or whatever you're using. You're going to continually see putting in there and you're not going to get anywhere. So mastering the air file is actually a very hard job, but once you get it mastered, you can actually use this. But really, to be honest with you, to make this surface that we are prepping up here primer ready, we aren't going to use air tools. Because using the air tool is going to be way too much for what we're doing. We've already got everything roughed in. We've already used our air file and we've already used our DA sander to break it down. You can see I got 36 grit on here from uh, breaking down the Bondo, filling that in, and then coming back with my Evercoat. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep saying Evercoat, it's polyester filler, and then skimming that. And now it's time to actually get this prepped properly so we don't continuously keep filling it up and, and wasting our, our material and doing it right. And the way that we're going to do that is by using a combination of hand blocks. Now, the brand that we're using isn't really necessary to show you due to the fact that I am not doing an advertising video for these people, but that the necessity is that you have to have a good set of hand blocks 
to do the job properly. And the one that I am using is a four inch block. You can kind of basically get to see that. I got a round dowel flexible block. This is flexible rubber. And then I got a long block here, which is, I believe, 11 inches or 13 inch block. And you can see that right here. All right. And the next thing that we're doing is we're using 80 grit. This is 80 grit sandpaper, dry. All right. We're done with our 36 grit. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our hand blocks to finish this procedure out. So if we look in this area right here, by using this block right here, we're going to be getting a lot of surface. We're going to be sanding a lot of surface down. And we're also going to be getting it nice and flat and smooth to the, the contour that we want. Um, over here in this area, this has a, a lip that flares out. And then this right here was pretty tricky. Uh, this, con this consists of hand sanding only with your fingers to get it to work proper. And I don't push on hand sanding. I, I always push, try to use a block everywhere that you can. Stay away from your fingers because you'll leave grooves. But when it comes to a situation like this, where this is flat, this comes up this way, and then you got your lip that goes up here, and then another lip that comes out this way, you don't really have any choice at all but to use your fingers to get that where you want it. Now in this area right here, um, I can still feel that it's a little bit low right in this area, but that could be caused by two situations. Either we got too much filler here or not enough over here. And the only way to find that out before we add more filler in this area is that we have to block sand this down. Now using this block right here, we're not going to go back and forth like this. We're not going to do a back and forth motion, but what we are going to do is we're going to use a motion where it goes up and over. So I'm going to go up like this, and then I'm going to also push my block that way. So as you can watch, I'm going to show you how this should actually be sanded. And I might go ahead and shift my block at different angles, but I'm always going this way here, and I'm doing a cross, cross action at the same time. And what we're watching for, we're watching for dark spots. If you look real close right here, you can see this is dark right here, and this is light. This is a continuous color. What we're trying to do is we're sanding this down so it is all one solid color, like up in here. If you see dark spots, that means that this section is high and the dark spot is low, meaning that we have way too much filler here, and that needs to be sanded down, blocked out, and feathered. And one more thing that is very important before we go any further, I want to uh, uh, caution you that it's always important to wear a dust mask. I'm not wearing one at this time, I always wear one, but the only reason I'm not wearing one now is because I'm doing an instructional video, but uh, it's very important to always wear a good breathable dust mask to keep the content of the uh, dust out of your lungs. Just letting you know. Matter of fact, you know what? I, I can't do this. I have to put my dust mask on. I thought I'd be able to get away without... Uh, using my dust mask on this little area, but it's just too much irritation for me and, and I like to be safe when I'm working. Now that we got the area pretty much block sanded down and you can see all the discoloration is starting to look like one solid color, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and concentrate with our small block and I noticed that there's a big 
area right here that is built up higher than the rest of it. And then you got a small area here, and that might be caused because of this. So we're going to take the small block, and now we're going to concentrate just on this area here and possibly feathering this out over here. But I'm thinking I'm going to have to add more filler over here. But see, that's the situation you have when you're doing this type of body work. And the best way to cover it is by using this. blocked it out to a consistency of almost being perfect I found that we got a low spot right here and if you look right here you can see there's the low spot you can see how it didn't feather out that's telling me there's a low spot here and see how dark it is right here this is all shiny and it's dark here that means that we had to put more filler in this area and then over here this little trail map here is telling me that there's a low spot here we're going to have to fill this area up with more uh, filler and then we'll add it to this if you look real close there that's a sharp edge that's not feathered out telling me that this is a low spot as well now while i'm at it i had a couple low spots up in here and then on this edge right here i'm going to go ahead and fill those in at the same time so what I'm going to do, um, due to the fact that we got some uh, serious low spots in this area here, and then of course this is a low spot here, like I said, I was going to go ahead and skim a coat in this area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a two-step procedure here that uh, I use, and that's to save money and also to make sure that my filler is going to lay down and level out the best way I can. And what I got here, I got some uh, polyester filler. And I also got some Bondo and then, of course, my hardener. Now, I mix the polyester filler with the Bondo. That makes the Bondo more creamier. It makes it float better. It goes on a lot smoother. And it just re really does the trick as far as doing body work the professional way. So we're going to take all that and mix it together. Another thing that you're going to notice is I'm using a medium-sized spreader on this. I'm not using a small one. I'm not using a large one. That also has a lot to do with how your Bondo is going to lay down by the size spreader that you're using. Um, if this was a very small dent, I'd be using a very small spreader. This is a medium size. We want to make sure that we float everything out. We're going to use a medium size spreader. Very important. Don't use the big giant spreader. You're going to put too much filler on it and then you're going to be over there sanding it for hours and hours. Very, very important that you know all this. So you want to mix up your, your, your filler, Bondo, uh, polyester, whatever you want to call it. You want to make sure that it's nice and creamy. You don't have any streaks in it and it's one solid color just like you're looking at right there. So we're going to clean off our uh, spreader. We'll take our spreader and notice how I'm holding that. That's just to cup it. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fill this in right here and when I do that I'm going to cut my spreader so it will lay the filler onto and you can see what I'm talking about keep your fingers away from the edge of this when you put your fingers on the edge it's real thin and it will 
uh, leave an impression in it. You want your fingers back here. And then as you can see, I'm feathering the filler out on top of the filler that's already there. But I'm concentrating, and I put some more in the middle there. See how I'm cupping that? Remember that low spot was right there. And then now I'm holding it at a flat edge. All right, I'm going to go ahead and flatten that out a little bit more so it will feather itself out. And then that's basically how you're going to do it, see? Let's go ahead and bring it swing this way, get rid of that low spot we had right there. And then that should do it. Over here, we're going to do the same thing in this area. We're going to bring it over, fill it in, just like that, keeping your fingers away from that edge of the spreader. You don't want your finger up here. Remember that. And then just feathering that out as we go. Just like so. And that should fix our situation we got right there in that area. Um, let's go up here and uh, put a little filler up in that area. Repeating our process. Uh, I noticed there was a couple low spots which might have been dings, door dings or something. So I'm just going to reach around here. I hope you can see what's going on. Let me. There we go. Is that a little better? Okay. So we're going to go ahead and feather this out. And you can see where it didn't feather out. That's telling me I need to put a little bit more on there. Right here. Because we're going to fill this edge in. Remember that edge was messed up. And then we'll push harder as we go out. You can see how I'm doing that. Because all we want to do in that area is just fill those little spots in. And make sure that we feather out our Evercoat filler, I mean, I'm sorry, our Bondo filler that we mixed up. And one more thing, um, right now, this is winter time in Texas, it's probably about 45 degrees in my shop, 50 degrees, and when it's cold like this, you got a lot more workspace to use with your filler. In the summertime, you got to go real fast, real quick, and know what you're doing, so... To me, the best time to do bodywork is in the winter time because you can actually mold your Bondo, your filler, and get a better consistency of, of spread. Kind of like here, see? Okay, we just kind of messed that up. So let's uh, do that again. I'm just going to go like that. There we go. Okay. So it's very important to um, know what's going on. And it looks like I actually filled this whole thing in, but let me tell you, when I get done sanding it, it's not going to be there. I'm telling you, this is very thin layers we're putting on. Um, I'm using this as a filler, and then when I sand it down, of course, a lot of this will be gone, and it will be done properly, and this is the way that it should be done. So, we'll let that dry. While that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and work on this area down here. But I can't do that because we got a little Evercoat uh, on the edge here. Let me clean that off around this edge, just like that. And I'll work on this area down here. And then, uh, once I get that done, we'll wait until this properly dries, and we'll come back and sand that. Now that our filler's dry, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our long block... Okay, because we're still doing this by hand. I don't want to use any air tools on this. All the filling procedure's been done. What we're doing now is leveling this all out and getting it ready for primer. Remember that. So what I want to do is I want to take my long block, and instead of using 80 grit, I got a sheet of 36 grit on here. And the only reason I have that on there is because I want to rough this surface up. And when I say rough it up, I'm talking that on filler, Bondo and polyester filler, um, there's always a thin layer that never actually really dries 100%. So if you use 80 grit on that, it's going to gum the paper up real quick. So by using the 36 grit, we'll break that down, get that top layer off of there, and then proceed using our 80 grit. And, uh, yeah, uh, what do we call that? Uh, repeat our process.
Now that that's done, we'll go ahead and remove our 36 grit and go ahead and apply our 80 grit. Everything's looking really well in this area. When we get over here, we start to see this area right here. And you can tell that the Bondo is not feathering out, which is telling me there's too much Bondo in this area, too much filler, and we gotta keep sanding this. Same thing over here. See the dark edges? So we gotta keep sanding until all that starts to feather out, just like you see right in this area right here. So since we got a good feather edge in this area right here, and it seems a little bit high in this area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back to my small block and then I'll feather that out and then once that's done, then we'll block the whole thing out again with our big block. Remember that little area I was telling you about that we might have to sand by hand? This little section right in here? Let me go ahead and get that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of 80 grit, fold it in half, and then I'm going to lightly put pressure, all right, just to clean this up inside this groove. Now, since I'm doing some hand sanding in this area, I'm going to go ahead and clean this sharp edge up right here using this sandpaper, lightly sanding it by hand. Now, we had a dent in this area right here, which actually hit this uh, body line and it made a dent into the body line. So what I had to do is fill that all in and then of course block it out. Now that it's all filled in, what we gotta do now is take this piece of paper and then we're gonna use it like this. See how I got that curved? I'm gonna go ahead and curve that paper and then I am going to put my fingers on each side of it just like you see right here. And all I'm doing is contouring that edge right there so it all matches together. You see how quick that happened. Just a couple good, nice light sweeps. The more you sand this, and the more you take your sandpaper and rub it across there, the more imperfections you're gonna get. This feels really nice. I like the way it came out. This is ready for primer. We got this ready for primer. This area here is almost ready for primer. I gotta block this area out, repeating my process of what I just showed you to do on that. And then once it's in primer, before I put any type of guide coat on it, I will go back and meticulously find any imperfections. Do you see how I did this? This means block. This has to be block sanded out by hand to make sure that it's all level right here. I got a circle right here that indicates there's a small ding right there. This is imperfection right in here. I'm going to have to block sand that out. And then we come over here. And you can see that represents there's a little ding right there. On the other finger, let's see what we found on this one. We got H on here. That means that's a small high spot. Same right here, a high spot. We got two little dings left here. This means block sand this out. And if you look right here, this is the body line I'm talking about. Well, there's a small dent in this body line. 
and I don't even know if you can see it, but it's there and has to be repaired. So this is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, over here at DIY Auto School showing you how to do this and hopefully you're learning the fast, easy, quick, simple way to get stuff done by watching my videos on this channel, DIY Auto School. I gotta get this done right here. Once I get this section done, I'm gonna move back down into the front of this long corner. If you know this corner panel is like six or seven feet long. You gotta do these things in sections. Got the back section done, I'll get the front section done, and then bam, in primer it goes, and we are done. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.